of the hot days that we have but right now it's boiling and I am going to start putting some things in here the poly house that are going to be in here over winter so although I've still got the tomatoes I'm not actually going to dig them out when I take them out I'm just going to chop them off at the bottom which means that nothing underneath them is going to get disturbed and for the moment I mean it's not being shaded because obviously I've chopped them all so they're bare stems all the way up so I'm just going to start planting underneath and the things that I've got to plant I've got some cos lettuces ready to go in and I've also got do you remember it would have been two vlogs ago now I uh, shifted some charred seedlings that I had put in the wrong place well they've come on massively they're really big um, so I'm just going to dot them along the back I'm going to keep the front clear because I've got the chilies still in place there and I'm not going to chop them off I'm actually going to dig them out and try and save them so I'm just going to plant all along the back I've also got quite a bit of space at this front patch where I've got some very young chilies that never really did anything and basil so I'm probably going to whip them out and then I'll be able to plant here too but for the moment I'm just going to do it around the back of the tomatoes I'm planting these little cos lettuces actually quite close to the Thai basil um, but the Thai basil isn't going to actually last that much longer so by the time these need the space the uh, basil will be out of the way but at the moment I'm leaning right over it and you know, it's still flowering beautifully and my goodness it smells so strong it's like putting your head in perfume It's a bit of a change in weather it's properly feeling autumnal up here again now there's even kind of like trees that are going properly red and also it's a bit nippy in fact it's really cold I've got like I'm Billy two jumpers today um, yeah so came up here and two annoying things firstly the uh, where we've sown the Simadi wrapper 
they're all coming up about this big and somebody's just like dug all the way through it. I can't blame the chickens, I know it wasn't them this time, despite me having to chase Lua off it about five times. Uh, it's not them, because they have been tucked up in their bed. So it's either a fox or a badger. Um, I think it's going to be a fox because with the badgers when they dig they tend to cause a huge amount of damage. The foxes are a little bit more delicate, they still leave like the little seedlings around. So. I've kind of patched back the hole and covered it up and then any seedlings that I did find I've sort of tried to tuck in and pretend nothing happened and we'll see if they take. To stop them doing it again though we're going to put some of you know that kind of quite uh, heavy gauge steel mesh that we use that we built the fruit cage out of and then we've got around. We've got a couple of square pieces of that and we're just going to put them over the bed resting on top of the sides of the raised bed bit you know on the wood. So the seedlings can still all grow up through it, but the badgers aren't going to dig, or the foxes, or whoever it was isn't going to um, kick them all over the show. So I'm going to do that first. The next thing that was annoying is that somebody has eaten all the tops off the new beetroot seedlings. Thank you very much, birdies. Uh, that'll be the pigeons. So we've got to throw a bit of netting over that as well. And when I've sorted all of that out, I'm going to be doing what I actually came up here to do which is looking at where we're going to install the water butt that's going to come off the side of the polytunnel. This is where they've been digging. I mean I've patched it over a bit now but I'm just going to lay this across the top. You can see it's, it's pretty strong but also the gaps are really wide so um, Everything is just going to grow through it, no problem. The polytunnel has got a sloping roof that just goes back towards the path and we're just going to put a piece of guttering along there that goes straight down into a water butt on the side. And then come spring next year I'm going to install a micro drip system from that going into the polytunnel. But for winter we just want to really collect the water. Where the polytunnel is situated on one side we've got trees so although it does get hit by the rain it's never... Um, fully exposed so it's only if the rain is coming either straight down or in from the side so um, yeah it's not going to be as efficient as other things but we can't really do it on the shed because which is where I'm standing now because we're directly under an oak tree and it's completely bone dry so there's no point there but we thought we would for the polytunnel so where we're going to be putting the water butt where we're installing it it's going to kind of be part of a bigger project to expand the beds on that side running into the path because at the moment we've got super wide path and I'm just going to narrow it down a bit so that it's the same width as the other path. We only really need to be able to get a wheelbarrow up and down it. We don't need kind of a wide vista for, for you know, parading or anything. Um, so we're going to be extending that and I need to still be able to access that water butt. So we're going to make a path and extend the bed. The edging that I've got on there at the moment is some uh, Victorian path edging that I retrieved from a job I did a couple of years ago now. Um, so that's going to be moved from there and it's going to become the edging for the lavender which is going across the front of the chicken cage. So I was going to take a load of cuttings of lavender and I have done but they're nowhere near ready, they're going to be going up on the top bed. Um, but very kindly uh, we were looking after somebody's greenhouse while they were away about a week ago and they brought us back a whole load of lavender. So we have got five of these incredibly healthy gorgeous looking chaps to put in along the edge of the chicken house. So I'm going to just move over that edging and get the lavender in and look at where we're going to be putting that water butt. Let me show you, it's easier if I just show you in like, I was going to say in person but it's not really in person is it? Show you with the camera rather than me just rambling about where it's going to go and describing. So let's go this way. 
So it actually wasn't that long ago that I dug this section out, I don't know if you remember, and I planted a load of Phasalia down there. It's got pretty big. I mean, I thought it was going to be down there for a lot longer, but it's just going to dig it out. And then we're going to extend that area all the way across here, across the front of the poly house. And this is the trim that I'm going to move down um, to be around the lavender. here just behind this cosmos here that is where I'm going to be putting the water butt so it's going to just feed straight off there into the water butt and then I'll have a hole in the side and the flower bed will extend all the way out here all the way up to the pond actually just with a path cut into the shed <laughs> Okay, well that's in. I mean, it's not firmed in properly yet because the ground's all still a bit loose where I've been digging, but you can see it mirrors what's going on along the asparagus bed there. So yeah, I think it works quite nicely. And I think once the lavender's in there and it's all kind of big and bushy and flowering, it'll be really lovely. I'm not digging out the Phasalia or anything like that. I'm just like, it's basically essentially been dug in, although I'm just leaving it on the surface. Um, it's just 
are going to be fine. I mean, I it didn't obviously have as long a life to do what it should have done as a green manure um, if I'd left it, but I really didn't think I was going to be planting the lavender that soon. So it all works out fine in the end. <laughs> spectacular morning up here today it was pretty early but it's perfect blue skies and after having a couple of days of pretty miserable kind of gray rainy weather this is a real joy so what we've got to do this morning is I think I mentioned it yesterday actually but um, next to along the side of the poly tunnel so I moved the frontage it's a massive earwig um, what was I saying so what I'm going to be doing this morning is clearing that patch where I took the frontage off the flower bed yesterday. I'm going to be just clearing that out, trying to keep those cosmos intact because they're still looking really lovely and they've got a bit of time to go really. And just clear the space at the back to put the water butt which is going to have the runoff from the roof of the polytunnel go straight into it. I haven't got the guttering or the drain pipe bit for it yet because the water butt we're using is a bit of a funny shape. It's kind of this shape but it's the only one we've got that's got a pre-cut hole in the top for the rainwater to go into and it's also got a tap already installed at the bottom which is where I'm going to attach the watering system for the polytunnel next spring so it's the one we really want to use but it's a bit of an odd shape so I want to get it in place before I measure how much um, plastic piping I need to get really so that's what we're going to do today We've also got to take the uh, sun shading off the greenhouse because um, now it's like not getting quite as much sun. It's hardly going to get over crispy in there and uh, it needs all the help it can get. So we're just going to whip that off and get that done. We're in a bit of a short uh, time thing this morning because um, I'm going out for lunch, which is quite exciting because I haven't been out for lunch since like February. <laughs> so we're up here really early and we're going to go you know, bish bash bosh and get it all done. But obviously the first thing I need to do is have a cup of tea because nothing's getting done unless I've done that. Okay, so down this side here is where I'm going to be putting the water barrel. As you can see, I should have been an air hostess. We've got quite a lot of this um, mallow around in here, but um, I mean, have a look at that for a root. Jeez. I'm going to be using for the uh, water butt is actually this fantastic recycled plastic click together base that we used underneath our shed. Um, I've been so pleased with it and this is the water barrel.
and so that's it really uh, this whole area is going to be cleared out this comfrey is going to be planted in a bed of its own this is our gorgeous cox's orange pippin um, which I transplanted last year and I'm so pleased it survived. As you can see, we've got a school right next to us and this screen I'm putting up, um, hopefully it's just going to hide that. We never used to be that exposed, but they recently replaced the fence and now it's a bit like we're on display. Well, that was the 25th episode of my allotment vlog. Interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, cheers to another 25, I suppose. So for the first week of autumn, that was not bad weather, was it really? I mean, had a couple of cold days, but the sun has been shining. And I mean, right now it's absolutely magnificent. It's gorgeous. I mean, I've just got, you know, a small top on and it's nearly October. Yeah, incredibly pleased to have started the um, project of kind of getting that water system and water saving sorted for the polytunnel because that's just a real waste all of that water goes so it's not even going into a bed when it comes off there it's just going straight onto the path so that's a no-go definitely worth saving the water when I'm installing the uh, water pipe I'll talk a bit more about how I'm going to do the watering system in there which should be quite interesting I'm hoping to get that all installed ready for spring next year it's not really necessary for the winter so I've got a bit of time on that one but I'm going to be clearing where all the cosmos are and everything that was um, in front of that area I'm going to be clearing a lot of that out and putting in some stepping stones because at the moment it's been okay it's not that deep we've been able to kind of like get our feet in and everything but next year I've got quite a lot to get in there like to fit <laughs> so it's going to be quite packed so I'm just going to put stepping stones a bit like you know where the asparagus is planted we've got kind of the stepping stones in there that system works really really well so I'm going to do that again in the flower border also going to demarcate kind of around the bottom of that little Cox Cox's orange pippin apple tree uh, so that I can you know keep that weed free and um, as healthy as possible and hopefully that honeysuckle is going to grow up all the way across the back there and be magnificent yep so we are moving on with all of those projects really um, I've got a list about, well I suppose everybody who's got a garden has got a list a mile long and mine just keeps growing at the moment so hopefully I'm going to be working my way through that. Yes, yeah, so I was also really pleased to um, have realised that I don't have to wait till I take the tomatoes out to, um, thanks Annie, I don't have to wait to take the tomatoes out before I started planting underneath them. So. Um, that was just like not working in my head but I realised so uh, that's pretty good got that first load of chard in and obviously the ones that I planted last week you know they're coming up they're looking really good what I have got to sow today my broad beans for spring last year I completely and utterly forgot to sow the autumn version of the broad beans and we only did the spring ones often how it works is that you don't actually get success with both but one year it's going to be the autumn ones that do really well and one year it's the spring ones that do really well and last year it was everybody's autumn ones did really well or on my site anyway and we never did the autumn ones because I forgot and obviously I don't know if you remember it was right the very early days of the vlog my broad beans were not good. They were, um, they had everything wrong with them actually. So not only did they get got by the amina pyrolid, which was um, fabulous, they also, because of the weather, they started flowering when they were really, really short. And so that wasn't great. On top of that, we got chocolate spot. We also got black fly, like you can't believe. Um, so basically it wasn't a success. So this year I am, um, Going to be doing both autumn and spring and i'm going to be doing them in the uh, root trainers which i know when i was sewing that's not even the wind that's the cat scratching his face on my camera pole um last time when i was using a lot of these um lots of people were asking me where i got them from um and I've now learned how you can put links in the description underneath. So I'll just tell you where I got them from. But if you want to search for them yourself, they're just called root trainers and they're fantastic. So I'm going to be sowing my broad beans in these as I do with all of the beans and peas and legumes in general, because they like a really deep root and I'll be getting them out in 
Don't touch the camera pole, baby. Um, yeah, I will be getting them out planted before the weather gets really cold. So, um, month's time or so, I think. What are you doing, Digger Pringo? Yeah, so that's about where we stand. And the only other thing to mention is the competition for um, celebrating my 25th episode. So I've had a look at what um, tomato varieties I've got plenty of saved and they are Garnet, which was the really fantastic little cherry, Vince the baking tomato, Black Russian, the Japanese Black Trifelli are both really, really fantastic big fat tomatoes. Also going to throw in the Bulgarian there. I've been growing that from saved seed for two years now and that's the one that was the absolutely gigantic one. Also Sundrop, which is the kind of medium sized, really, really bright orange one. Small pear shaped, dinky cherry, really sweet flavour and a pear shape, obviously. And the Derby striped, which is a red and yellow striped one. Sorry, you're moving in the wind. And also the pink plum, which is a short plum variety uh, that's really quite pink. It's like a coral colour. It's very pretty. And I've also saved plenty of the hot lemon chilli, which is my all-time favourite, and black jalapeno, which is black when it's young and really, really fruity. And then as it matures, it goes bright red. And then there's also the orange habanero, which is fiery and gorgeous. So... That's what I've got available for seed swapping, but it also, that's 12 varieties, I think it's nine tomatoes and three chilies, that the competition that I said sort of in aid of it being the 25th anniversary is going to be winning seeds for all of those, so the 12 varieties. And so my question is to win that is, what was the hashtag that appeared right at the beginning of this episode? It's just a small competition to win uh, 12 seed varieties from me, which are nine of the best tomato varieties I grew this year and three of my favourite chilli varieties that I grew this year. Um, I'll make the list reappear now. The way to win them is to leave me a comment underneath you have to be subscribed and then leave me a comment underneath that has the hashtag included in it that was shown right at the beginning of this episode you can enter as many times as you like over on Instagram uh, you just need to be a follower of mine and tag a friend in the bottom in the comment section uh, there will be two winners from YouTube and two winners from Instagram so that's where we stand the competition is in no way um, sponsored or endorsed by YouTube or Instagram. It's just a way of saying thank you because um, 25 episodes, never thought I'd get this far and it's a completely pointless exercise if you're not watching and commenting and um, engaging with what I'm doing on here. So it's basically just a thank you. Um, so I am going to leave it at that and I'll say cheers. Uh, hopefully there'll be 25 more episodes to come. <laughs> Where will 25 episodes take us? It'll be spring again by then, will it? 25. Well, we'll be gearing up for spring, definitely. What is there, 52 weeks in a year? No, we'll be in the full swing of it. Yeah. So, cheers. And um, I will see you this time next week. And I will announce the winners.
that was the sunshade that I had up just falling off. Thank <laughs> you.